Hey folks, Pat here. I have a old set of um, not pruning shears, but uh, pruning cutters. Fisker's uh, like a little limbing saw here for getting branches that are high up in trees. And I was just sharpening this and knocking all the rust off it. I hit it, hit this with a wire wheel, and I also sharpen the teeth on it with a round file and didn't think about it showing you guys until I got halfway through the project. Like I say this is for a like a little pole saw, a little hand operated pole saw for limbing uh, trees. So I have a tree I'm going to limb up and so I wanted to put an edge on this thing to minimize my effort and maximize my production with this blade. So what I'm doing now is I'm basically I'm just uh, sanding and polishing off all of the rust off of the finish off of here. If I flip this over I've actually buffed this with a steel uh, wire brush here on a drill but this is a very rough surface yet this on the other hand is a smooth surface so my point is is that if you have a rough surface you have a lot more drag when it comes to uh, running this through a limb so if I smooth out this surface uh, when I have that pole saw up in the air and I'm trying to cut off a limb this is going to have a lot less drag on the other side because it's smooth than this side so what I'm doing now is I'm sanding off all of this rough surface, getting all this all this rust off of here. Matter of fact, I might have a little bit better way of buffing that off of there. So what I have here is just a Porter Cable profile sander and <laughs> a orbital sander hook and loop type uh, sanding disc. And so what I'll do is I will just polish that up with this with this sanding disc here. So what I did before I uh, smoothed out this side, I kind of got the cart before the horse, is that I took a 7 30 seconds uh, round file for a chainsaw and worked it in here and sharpened these uh, teeth here. Um, they're still very sharp and uh, some of you might have noticed when I was sanding this, I was trying to stay away, away from the edge of the teeth here to try to keep from getting the very hook part of this. And as you can see, I got to daydreaming, and I just barely hit three of these on this side. I didn't hit any on this side. But uh, if you're going to try this, try to avoid hitting this. You'll take the set out of this. Each one of these teeth, if uh, you notice when I'm talking about a set, but you're going to have this tooth right here is facing out that way. The next tooth is facing in this way. This tooth facing in that way, that way, this way, that way, this way, that way, and so forth, so on and so forth. So basically what you have is the tooth set is actually wider than the blade itself. So the tooth set is going to have come on each each side of the blade. So that, that's what gives you your kerf is your the width of your, your teeth here. So if I have all that rust on there, that's going to have that much more drag when I try to drag this blade through through the limb that I'm trying to cut off the tree. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this a little bit more with the file, the 730 seconds file. Okay, I'm just going to du try to duplicate the angle and pitch. Okay. 
next one. So I'm going every other tooth. This this other tooth is going to have an angle like that, crisscross, so so forth and so on. Try to follow the same angle and same pitch. And if you can, try to make it as even as possible, like so many strokes and so much pressure, the same pressure applied to each tooth, so the cutting is all the same. Sometimes you'll have to hit it once more. So now I'm switching sides and I'm going to go ahead and file this and I'm going to try to duplicate my same pitch and angle and stroke pressure and everything on this pitch on these teeth. And of course the proper way to use a use a file is never never drag it backwards but always try to run it the full length of the file. You don't always see me do that because I'm focusing mostly on getting that angle and getting that tooth straight. I got it sharp, you know. But I try to use the whole file and then I rotate the file tap the uh, shavings out of it and the dirt and whatever else gets in there. Okay, that cleans that up. Now we'll take it back over to the pole and reassemble. I guess one more thing I'd like to note is a guy could probably go in here with a flat file and file the tops of these down just a little bit, but I'm going to try to make this work. I, I think it's going to be nice and sharp. I don't, I don't think I'm going to have any problem with this. When you take this down, you're going to take some of the set out. You're going to narrow the set, and uh, it's, you know, it's going to make it the, the kerf narrower, and then you're going to be fighting, rubbing the side of the blade, possibly. So I'm going to try it like that, see how it see how it runs. Oh, so you can see those teeth. The bright part is where the file obviously hit. Here's the other side. Okay. May I get show you a real close up of the uh the set. You know, you can see the you can see the um one tooth goes one way, one tooth goes the other, and so you can see where that kerf will be just a little bit wider than the blade itself. Anyway, we'll go ahead and get this thing attached back to the pole. This thing's been sitting around the property for a long time. And to be quite honest with you, I don't even remember how the dead gun thing works. Okay, this is a pruning mechanism on the back side of that. Which is also dull. I'll go get a flat file. Again, trying to follow the same contour, same pitch and angle as the uh, original cut. You can see where I made that shiny spot right here. I'm going to try to duplicate that clear across the page. I'm not going to hit it perfect, but as long as I get close, I should be okay. I'm going to go take this over to the grinder. I think I could do a better job on the grinder. You can see, you can see the hole in there, the blade, 
has to go in like so. And I have to line up this hole here because this bolt runs through there and that runs into the wide part on that hex bolt there, hex headed bolt. The bolt runs flush with this plastic piece in here. So I'll rotate it around and I'll install this again. Lock that down tight. And I'll show you the tool not to use for this. And that's a, just a set of pliers. Okay, hopefully that'll work better than it would have if I didn't clean all this up. That feels good and sharp. Okay guys, we're out here at the apple tree. I'm going to see if uh, my sharpening did any good. So, I got this lower limb here. It's starting to cross to another limb over there, so I'm going to go ahead and just take this out. I could take that out with a power saw easy enough, but uh, I want to give this thing a try here to see how well it works. See, it worked great. 